At least 2 billion children are already out of school globally, according to one of the most trusted British newspaper weekly, The Economist. That is just one of the major fallouts of the coronavirus, which has quarantined roughly plus 3 billion people of the world's roughly 7.8 billion inhabitants. And according to the International Air Transport Association, the entire aviation industry is expected to lose roughly $140 billion, a disease which has taken a ravaging effect on the globe as the African economic market space is expected to nosedive from 3.3% economic growth this year to roughly 1%. Hello and welcome. I am Charles Ibune, your chief international correspondent, and this is our world under the COVID virus as we unravel together the science, the impact, and the restructuring of the world brought by this disease. Everybody and every activity is on their normal track. In the roughly 60 million people inhabited, this central Chinese landlocked Hubei province with approximately 11 million people found in its metropolitan capital, Wuhan. In December 2019, the coronavirus outbreak was declared in the Wuhan province of the People's Republic of China. Over time, it gradually spread to Asia, Europe, and Africa, resulting in the death or quarantine of several people. The coronavirus, these are a family of viruses. A family that can go, can cause disease from, you know, mild, like the common cold, and then you can have severe ones like we're having now. You remember, there was once you heard about SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome. You heard about it. It was a coronavirus that caused that. You heard about the MERS, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. It was the coronavirus. Now we have this. It's zoonotic, meaning the viruses that go from animals to man. I think the first time we had the coronavirus was uh, in 2002, in November, when uh, they noticed that there was um, a new kind of uh, pneumonia that was attacking people from the Guangdong province in, in China. And by 2003, March, um, the World Health Organization had put out an alert to warn people coming from these areas of um, um, a kind of infection that uh, they had not seen uh, that was causing an atypical pneumonia. Um, and then followed that was the CDC uh, that described it as um, the... The Center for Disease Control in the U.S. Yes, in the U.S. That described it as a severe acute respiratory syndrome. And it got the name SARS, uh, to which was attached COV for, for uh, uh, coronavirus. And uh, by the time that... Um, uh, they started uh, to contain. Um, it was four months later when they started uplifting the bans, uh, the travel bans from Southeast Asia. But then they, there's still some bans on certain animal species which they found could contain the virus. And when the World Health Organization had tallied it in December of 2003, then they realized that um, there were about 29 countries that had been uh, touched by this virus. And, uh, and the, the, the death rates at that time were about uh, 10 individuals out of 100 who were infected, so it was quite high. Amidst such a flashback, an ordinary life in this country with plus 1.3 billion people, a health disquiet, begins late 2019 with signs of a resurface of the coronavirus with the Chinese authorities reporting it to the World Health Organization in December, same year. Our world faces a common enemy, COVID-19. The virus does not care about nationality or ethnicity, faction or face. It attacks all relentlessly. 
the SARS wasn't as bad as it is now, the MERS wasn't, but this one we're seeing is coming, you know, at this stage. It means sometimes it's less, sometimes it is more, and we're just seeing epidemics and pandemics coming in, which means we have to prepare for this. We have to have plans to preparing for epidemics and for pandemics. Well, it's not as deadly as the first. If you look at the numbers now, the death, uh, the case fatality rate is still at uh, around 3%. The former one was at about 9.6 or about 10%. And uh, this one is not as deadly, but it has touched more individuals. And therefore, if you look by way of numbers, then it has outweighed what the former one had had. And there are many reasons why this uh, virus is spreading so fast. Um, I think one of those is that, you know, it came at a time when the season was appropriate um, and uh, there was a lot of travel. And if you look at most of the cases um, in different places where it has occurred, um, you would notice that it's done by importation or people who have traveled to these areas. And so by the time they go back to their countries, um, they would have transported uh, these diseases or people who travel to other countries would take it into these other countries. At the start of the medical challenge, the Chinese government battles the disease alone. Some capitalist leaders even mock the situation to be good for their businesses with the distressed Chinese economy. The dynamics change when the death toll climbs sharply. Well, 26 people have died so far after contracting the virus which attacks the respiratory system. All of those deaths have been in China, mostly in and around Wuhan, but now there have been two deaths outside Hubei province for the first time. Nationally, there are currently 830 confirmed cases of patients infected with the virus. Another case has now been confirmed in Thailand, bringing the total number of international cases to 14. One of the most nearly every government adopted policy to roll back Corona in the world today is complete lockdown of cities by states, countries. Don't you think this is a political solution to a clearly medical problem? Oh, you've seen where in this situation that it is, look at what happened in China, look at what happened in the US and now if you go to Africa you know for a while we're wondering the numbers were so low but it was coming in now we see where we are where were we two weeks ago you saw the numbers two weeks ago maybe in the single digits and now we are past 100 so we are moving on you know going on with this and countries like Nigeria has a not so complete lockdown. South Africa has a complete lockdown. Morocco has a complete lockdown. Rwanda has a complete lockdown. The most vulnerable, those who are dying, are the plus 50 generation, the sexagenarians, the octogenarians, the septagenarians, people like you. Why? Medically. Well, because um, as you age, your enzymes no longer become effective. And, um, and so the body, even though it mounts its own kind of immunity, it's not effective in mounting a, a lasting immunity. And uh, also those who are a little bit aged have other conditions um, which are sometimes are chronic. And therefore by the time some other stress uh, adds up to those medical conditions, then they quickly degenerate. And, and so you get it um, quite severe in, in the aged uh, individuals. The disease appears to have originated from a Wuhan seafood market where wild animals, including mammals, birds, rabbits, bats, and snakes, are traded. Scientifically, where is corona coming from? Well, I think corona is coming from a natural infection that mutated, and uh, I don't think that it's a biological weapon. I equally don't think that um, uh, people should uh, lay the blame again on one way or the other. Uh, the reason being that when things mutate, uh, they can take new forms. And uh, it's been 17 years that uh, researchers have been trying to get uh, a vaccine. Um, I understand that uh, some people have made considerable progress in Germany towards uh, getting a vaccine that may go into trial 
in 2020. It seems people are not taking this seriously. Maybe it's because they haven't had the message. Because this is really a crisis, and everybody should take it as a real crisis. It's disastrous. Meanwhile, armed conflict rages on around the world. The most vulnerable, women and children, people with disabilities, the marginalized and displaced, pay the highest price. They are also at the highest risk of suffering devastating losses from COVID-19. Let's not forget that in war-ravaged countries, health systems have collapsed. Health professionals, already few in number, have often been targeted. Refugees and others displaced by violent conflict are doubly vulnerable. The fury of the virus illustrates the folly of war. Coronaviruses are known to jump from animals to humans. So it's thought that the first people infected with the disease were a group primarily made up of storeholders from the seafood market who contracted it from contact with animal. Basically, uh, at, the, at the very beginning, uh, they said the, the pangolin was uh, at the origin of it, uh, but we also know that the bats are uh, also uh, carriers of these and other viral infections. And uh, we, in our training of you know, viral hunters at the Biotechnology Center, uh, we have been able to detect quite a number of uh, other viral infections in bats, and sometimes, um, you know, camels, and sometimes uh, uh, other cat-like uh, mammals uh, would take on uh, these infections and then be able to transmit. And so by the time snakes, for example, eat uh, the, the bats, and by the time uh, cats eat the snakes, then you get all these passages, and during these passages, um, it depends on the, the size of the inoculum. The more the viruses are present in these animals, the more likely uh, they will be selected uh, with mutations that can ultimately be transmitted into humans. And uh, this is a particular case. There is this huge debate in the science world today of chloroquine. Where do you stand on? Uh, I, with hydroxychloroquine, I mean, the study, you know, I'm a scientist, I look at studies and I see results. Mm. That, the studies that started out have shown that, you know, when you combine hydroxychloroquine with azithromycin, it is at least helping to cure, you know, the people who are in a severe disease area. So, you know, if that study says that, and people are taking it on, I think it's worth also trying it in other areas. In our country, I think that's the treatment solution. This virus is a new virus. And when a new thing comes like this, everybody tries something and that has worked. So that is what they're saying in the US now, in other places, that has worked, let's try it. So they are making chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine is being made in different places. We at the Institute of Medical Research have also asked that we start producing hydroxychloroquine also is one of the resolutions that we had when we had the bond meeting a few days ago. Overwhelmed by the rapid contamination nature of the epidemic, the Chinese government places the entire Wuhan community under a quarantine. Trapped foreign nationals, about two million of them in China, yet to get means of feeding race alarm on social media, on the lockdown, especially the student community, expanding the global health outlook of the novel coronavirus to the dislike of many a government. The Chinese authorities have imposed a lockdown in the central city of Wuhan, where the coronavirus was first discovered. Other cities in Hubei province have also have major restrictions to their public transportation. Millions of people are in quarantine. Just one day ahead of the Chinese New Year holiday, rail stations across the province have largely shut down. Flights have been suspended and police checkpoints have been set up on main roads. And media reports worldwide from the traditional to the new especially social media have been producing conflicting statistics about which is the most deadly pandemic in the world some newspapers some radio some television stations and social media have said covid 19 is the most deadly pandemic but let's do a flashback together the spanish flu of 1918 killed 
roughly 50 million people. That is more than the number killed by World War I and infected plus 500 million people worldwide. That is almost one third of the world's population at the time. Statistics like this indicate a clear line on where we stand with the coronavirus this year. I just saw MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, saying that it has assembled roughly 24,000 uh, articles about um, uh, the coronavirus. Where are we with the research for a vaccine? Oh, vaccine right now, say research towards a vaccine, you have to have the molecule. Mm. I mean, you have to have the vaccine, the uh, virus is there now. Mm. So now that we know it, now people are starting to work on the vaccine. And if you really listen to real vaccine people in the U.S., they'll tell you it's because you have to produce your vaccine and you have to do the clinical trials. So we have about a year maybe for that. Mm. But research, there should be research going on now. Mm. That's why, you know, we have, I chair the board of the Medical Research Institute, which is a part of uh, the Ministry of uh, Research. Mm. You saw uh, the Minister of Research herself, you know, talk about the plans that the ministry has for research and medical research as such is with the Institute of Medical Research and Studies of Medicinal Plants. Mm. So we ourselves had a board meeting on Friday, mm. you know, so we can at least know what's going on and give the orientation for what should be happening here. You, 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 you just spoke about um, research and the kind of collaboration which uh, should exist. What kind of collaboration is amongst you scientists now, globally? You, oh, yeah. Are you talking to each other in Nigeria? Are you talking to each other in, 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 in Ethiopia? Are you talking to each other in France? Uh, Luc Montagneux and others. Are you pulling your resources together, intellectual resources? Thank because this is... Very much. Uh, all of us are going to die. Let us be clear about this. Absolutely. I know the research world, I mean the scientists up in the world, research is going on quite a bit. I mean, I'm being asked for what you have to do now is funds are coming in now. So scientists can apply to do those. If you look, the African Academy of Sciences, which I belong to, I'm a member, mm. they have come up now with 12 questions asking scientists. These are the areas that are important so people can look into. You know, funding has been promised. Uh, WHO has a solidarity. Unitate has promised to go on with that solidarity with WHO and give funding. So you have funding bodies that are coming in. You have projects that people, so all we have to do now in science is look out for these calls and apply and get some money to do the work. I think you've read in, the, in many reports that are talking about the virus that it cannot live in hot weather. And that's why the African continent, as you've seen, is not suffering much from corona as much as countries in the north. If you look at Dr. K.K. Chen of the University of Birmingham, who is a medical health specialist, um, these are people who are saying that, okay, well, we can use the mask just for uh, people with symptoms. And then you come to somebody like um, Arnold Monto of the University of Michigan in the U.S. He says that, no, we don't need this. Most countries, especially in Asia, mm -hmm. have asked the general public to wear their mask. Mm -hmm. Some people say no, it's just for the um, victims. Scientifically, no. what is correct? No, right now, same science, it has been shown now, because at that time, they said the droplets were in the air that would only go on surfaces. So it's when you touch and so on. Now we know. Science has said we have those droplets of those viruses in the air. So if they are in the air and they've been asked that way, for that reason, wear the masks. That is it. It depends, you know, science, where is it? At that point when they were saying all that, you remember they were only saying that these will only be on surfaces and so on. Mm. Now it's in the air. Mm. So wear the mask. The mask will protect. Mm. It cannot survive in Africa. The temperatures are too high. It can only survive in Europe where the temperatures are too low. So what are the climatics of Corona? Again, it's difficult to say. Why I say so is because um, originally they said um, warm, hot climates would not allow the virus to survive. But uh, recent information said that if it's hot and humid, then it allows the virus also to survive. So it's still too early for us to come to jump to a conclusion where this could actually, um, what climatic conditions could actually favor. Um, it is difficult to say at this point in time 
whether a hot climate would kill the virus. And I think that is an assumption which should not be propagated because it could lead to even further spread because people would say, hey, after all, um, the climate is hot and therefore um, I'm, I'm kind of protected. No, we're not. We must face realities. Mm -hmm. Most of the world we are living today is a digital one. It is. And um, it seems to me that um, most scientists don't communicate digitally. Don't you think that this is a time that most of you to invade the social media so that the quote unquote untrained social media doctors can disappear when you well, have the right message? That's how I come. If you saw, I had to do a program in Pidgin English. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, I've not seen I that did. one. <laughs> yes, I did. Because, you know, we have, we have some of these are higher women, and the director, uh, Dr. Adija Amani, has a program. She has stopped coronavirus. So she called me and she said, you have to do something. So I went on, you're right, that this is the way to get the messages. And I thought the best word wasn't in English. I did in English, but I thought it was very important that I do it in Pidgin English. And I did it in Pidgin English. And so now that's why I'm saying messages like that should go out in the local languages that we have. Mm -hmm. So our own people down there would really see how serious it is. Because I started out by saying, you know, it is bad. It's a crisis. And we all have to make sure that we realize the gravity of this. You know? That is why today I am calling for an immediate global ceasefire in all corners of the world. It is time to put armed conflict on lockdown and focus together on the true fight of our lives. To warring parties, I say, pull back from hostilities, put aside mistrust and animosity, silence the guns, stop the artillery, end the airstrikes. This is crucial to help create corridors for life-saving aid, to open precious windows for diplomacy, to bring hope to places among the most vulnerable to COVID-19. The first foreign government's response to the outbreak of corona in China was to airlift their citizens from the country in which by January this year, there were already calls for a global action through the most established forms of gatherings, such as the group of 20 or the group of seven. A world completely shut down, flight cancels, big international events already canceled. For the very first time in human history since 1918 and 1945, the only wars, the First and Second World War, which altered the calendar of the Olympic Games and ensured that they were postponed. COVID is a major disease because it has equally shifted this year's Olympics, which were supposed to take place in Tokyo, Japan. And just like during the Second World War period, it was Japan which was expected to host the Olympic Games. The International Monetary Fund and the World Bank annual meetings also considered the Oscars of the finance world have been cancelled. Imagine other gatherings and the sport world in particular has been hit hard by this new disease, which has of course cancelled including the most expensive and lucrative championship in the world, the English Premier League. The new world order is gradually being redefined by coronavirus. I think we should remind ourselves that this pandemic is an unprecedented crisis globally and it affects uh, mostly the most developed countries all over the world. It started in China and then now uh, the epicenter of the, pandemia, of the pandemic is Europe. And those are the countries who usually uh, mobilize international solidarity. Now when these countries are hit, at the level they are hit, since now almost three months, um, it impacts on the way the international governance work. So you can understand that the UN, the UN system is affected. Um, the United States are looking for solutions. France is looking for solutions. Italy is hit very hard. So I think uh, we are facing an unprecedented crisis and all the countries are looking for uh, local and national solutions. And uh, the way the virus is impacting the health system in in industrialized country uh, doesn't give any space for uh, holding meetings and doing things like that at the level of the 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 the, 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 the Security Council or the, the G7 or the the G20. Let us take inspiration from coalitions and dialogue 
slowly taking shape among rival parties in some parts to enable joint approaches to COVID-19. But we need much more. End the sickness of war and fight the disease that is ravaging our world. It starts by stopping the fighting everywhere now. I think that countries need to step up uh, their preparedness. Um, this is not the first, it's not going to be the last. And uh, there are many conditions around that favor um, the outbreak of, uh, of any particular virus. And I think that uh, now that uh, there's more, and more available technology, um, countries should step up their fight and their preparedness for any viral um, outbreak. And therefore, this investment in time is important um, because not only do you need to invest in infrastructure, you need also to invest in the personnel. And, um, and I think this is just going to be a coordinated response all around the world. As the number of infected cases rose, with passengers on board planes, ships, we're all now victims across the continent. Global health experts' attention began to focus more on the World Health Organization, the world's most renowned medical agency. How do you consider such initiatives to mobilize resources for uh, mm. equipping hospitals and providing universal health care on the continent? Um, financing health, uh, I think, um, was not only discussed in the Pan-African Parliament, uh, but it was an issue uh, during uh, the summit, the African Union summit in February. Mm -hmm. And when uh, the heads of states and heads of government uh, uh, of Africa agreed to focus on universal health coverage, and especially focus on primary health care, and to increase uh, domestic uh, resource allocation uh, for uh, the health systems or health services. And that was, uh, I think, very, very important because when we talk about uh, health care financing, um, we, we have to rely on our uh, domestic resources because whatever comes from outside uh, is only a complement, money that comes from donors. The main source of the health care financing should be uh, uh, from domestic uh, resources. And I was in the meeting in February when the leaders deliberated on this issue and there was a consensus that countries in Africa should increase that uh, should increase the domestic resources. And I was so happy to see leaders really showing commitment. The WHO, the World Health Organization, has said it doesn't yet consider it to be a global health emergency. Attempts to stop the spread of the virus though being enforced in many countries around the world. Here in Hong Kong, people had to queue to collect refunds after they cancelled their travel plans for fear of travelling to an infected area. Are you surprised the World Health Organization is yet to declare it a global health emergency? It is a questionable attitude. A day after that statement, the Director General of the World Health Organization declared Corona a global health emergency and worked guidelines to prevent its further spread. Containment was a key policy drive as a therapy for vulnerable communities worldwide. To establish this herd immunity, the first thing people should know is that they should wash their hands very frequently. Soap deals with this virus like nobody's business. People should also have san hand sanitizers. They should avoid salutations or greetings by contact. At the same time, they should also avoid large crowds and uh, they should learn some new habits, hygiene habits, um, of knowing how to cough. Um, sometimes they say cough into your sleeves. Um, where the University of Yaoundé assembled anthropologists which said this was not the best of ways, especially for Africa. The best way is to have some tissue. Once you cough or sneeze into this tissue, then discard of it. And um, just wash your hands frequently. And I think this would uh, be able to, to contain. A large crowding um, should be avoided because then by reason of sneezing, um, you can have this transmitted by reason of coughing you can have this transmitted. And I think that those very practical measures are what we're seeing. The United Nations system itself is remaining 
um, very active on the front of the crisis. You have seen the agencies like WHO, you have seen um, World Food Program, all those um, technical agencies of the UN system are doing their job. They are mobilizing their workforce globally to try to support governments in looking for solutions uh, to respond to the crisis. Those were possibly two late actions for containment because the digit of infected cases surged in France, Italy, South Korea, Canada, Iran, Spain, and the United States. And extraordinary measures never seen in our time were taken in what appeared to be a complete shutdown of the world, bearing the horror confinement image of chaos described in the last book of the Bible, Revelations, or an idea of hard times in English novelist Charles Dickinson's Hard Times, or the pain endured by Thomas Hardy's main character, Michael Hunshot, in the mayor of Casterbridge. Frustrated, I wouldn't say. Um, concerned, yes. Um, in the sense that um, I think it's when uh, we have outbreaks like this that uh, the science world is giving some attention. Um, I'm not frustrated in the sense that uh, the money that uh, you hear uh, then trying to put out to save uh, some of the industries, uh, some of it would be also be geared towards research. And uh, this morning I saw quite a number of advertisements um, asking that people who could provide rapid responses to this um, uh, pandemic could come up with proposals. And I think that this is opening up also to the science community. And uh, we scientists need to do a better job in how we ask for this funding. Um, we need our institutions to support us uh, so that we can also levy uh, uh, claims to some of this money that is being put out. Diotelo of the coronavirus has exposed one key pathetic reality of the current health system, that it is globally weak, globally dysfunctional, and globally a cake to handle maladies of this generation. I think uh, at the same time, uh, scientists uh, should step up and uh, national academies as well as other funding agencies should actually lobby uh, to get as much funding as possible so that um, we can give a, a coordinated response. I say so because this virus 17 years later has come back in another form. So we have to set up the structures right now to be able to preempt any other um, upsurge of a virus of similar nature or others that may, may prop up. That is what our human family needs now more than ever. Amidst primary campaigns for the November elections, followed by a backlash from quasi inaction on the pandemic already from Democrats in Congress and an ever critical American press in moments like this on the federal executive. The Trump administration banned all flights from the European Union. The rescue packages vary from government to government. The US government, for example, is uh, putting a rescue plan that is worth about $2 uh, trillion, not leaving out the fact that there's already a budget deficit projected at about $1 trillion. Uh, the uh, Canadian government, for example, is looking at $86 billion to see how they can sustain the, the economy. Qualified the worst sanitary challenge to the country in a century. French President Emmanuel Macron locked down the almost 70 million populated France, a decision earlier taken by Europe's most hit country leader, Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte of Italy, as other governments closed their terrestrial, air, and maritime borders. Exceptions were left only for national security imperatives. Naturally, there's a disruption in the supply chain management. And the supply chain management naturally means that there's low level of production. If productivity is low, it means that uh, there's fiscal impact. We don't expect to have taxes that increase. Uh, among some of the measures that have been put in place by the Western world is the reduction of, uh, of taxes. 
you know, tax breaks have been given to companies. Government is seeing how they can put in subsidies and uh, even resources that can permit some companies to keep surviving. So um, it will be difficult to be conclusive as far as the impact is concerned, but one thing is sure is that it's, it's going to be negative. Today, the planetary infection data stands at nearly a million infections with plus 21,000 dead worldwide. The projected growth rate has already is already dropped. We're projecting a fall in, uh, in, the, in the growth rate as uh, the IMF has already declared. Naturally, the fall in the global growth rate uh, is going to be reflected in, our, in the growth rates of individual countries. If productivity is already low, you don't expect uh, resources to come from where they were coming as usual because there's a disruptive, fa there's a disruptive uh, factor. So I think we should expect a natural fall in our respective growth rates. It's true that uh, China is uh, putting a massive rebuilding plan, but we, now, we all know that uh, the, before the outbreak of the coronavirus, even the productivity and growth rate of China had reduced. It had moved from the situation it used to be in 2014 to approximately about 5 to 6 percent. So I think uh, uh, the impact is naturally going to be negative. The geomedical disruptions of corona are unique in the establishment of the dysfunctionalities and deficiencies of this pestilence, which has shown the increasing power of the corporate world in responding to planetary connected problems are sweeping. The COVID-19 family the world is not Les enfants ne vont plus à l'école. Euh, des nations entières, entières sont calfeutrées. COVID-19 has put the world on a standstill. Children are not schooling. Nations euh, are under lockdowns with pros and crons. COVID-19 has put on the table the question of international solidarities, not solidarity. Le problème des solidarités. Je ne parle pas de la solidarité, mais des solidarités internationales. COVID-19 a affecté nearly all the members of the United Nations. That is roughly 193 countries. And in roughly four months of its existence, the effects are devastating from the entertainment industry to banking and finance. But there is one clear element where the dynamics seems to be shaping. The fourth industrial revolution is gradually having its real meaning with the advent of this disease because artificial intelligence, the virtual world in particular, has seen traffic increase, especially in online transactions, to give the digitalization process of the world a new impetus. There is uh, uncertainty from two fronts. The first level is that we don't know how long it's going to last. Uh, the corporate world does not know how long this coronavirus is going to last. And the second aspect is what are the measures put in place to see how they can eventually rebound back, you know, in the event where uh, losses are going to be made uh, because of the reduction in flight, uh, unemployment, uh, impact on supply chain management, low consumption of goods, because most countries have blocked their borders, maritime and air. So uh, it means that the air transport or land transport in terms of, uh, of goods is going to greatly, greatly, greatly drop. How do you qualify this crisis personally? And um, do you think that we are heading towards an inevitable recession? Uh, to tell you the truth, uh, I think we are heading towards a recession. Uh, the market, financial markets are already closed. Even uh, during the past years, we've never really gotten to this kind of a situation where we have to close down financial ma markets. People are all working remotely. Uh, nobody knows which direction to things are going to take. So it's going to be it's going to be very challenging. But one thing is important is that we have to we have to keep calm. We have to stay positive and hopeful. And I believe that. Uh, with the right attitude which is being adopted now around the world and the, the fact that people are conscious, working remotely from homes, uh, trying to ensure that uh, the economy stands, I think uh, the impact will be negative but sustainable. Um, since you were ever born, has there ever been um, a disease that has ever scared you more than Corona? 
No. You know, other diseases had hope. The worst thing with this disease is that we don't even know whether we are going to have the treatment anytime soon. You know, uh, there are restrictive measures that are in place. There are medications to treat the symptoms, but not the disease. And there is a lot of uh, uh, conspiracy theory around even the medications that are being, are being proposed. Uh, like uh, Queenie, is it Queenie Max or chloroquine. chloroquine and other medications that are around. So uh, everybody is scared. We don't, we don't know. And the level, the, 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 the death rates are increasing by the death. Aujourd'hui, les grands États, ce qu'on appelle les puissances, ce que nous pouvons appeler les puissances dans le domaine des relations internationales, dans le, dans le langage de la diplomatie, la valeur des puissances a, a été inversée. Parce que plus vous avez... Today. The notion of powerful states has been reversed because the more you have better transport, roads, entertainment, cafeteria, the more you are at ease, the more you are exposed. The 2017 great powers have become so powerless today. De 2019 euh, sont devenus aujourd'hui des puissances extrêmement faibles et vulnérables parce qu'ils ont euh, les faiblesses de leurs avantages. The geomedical disruptions of the geopolitical order caused by Corona are unique in establishing the new world order by the deficiencies of this pestilence, which has shown the increasing power of the corporate world in responding to planetary connected problems, as sweeping. It is a virus which is hanging on the air. And even the science-based Western world with a lot of precision is unable to master it. Today, even the world leadership is facing this crisis. And uh, the fact that uh, it is an unprecedented one, uh, the fact that uh, every country in the world are now looking for uh, measures of uh, rest travel restriction, it is also, I think, a consequence of the fact that the crisis is a one which affects public health, human health. And you cannot convene meetings when you are not even sure people can travel. And uh, this is the first time the world is confronting such uh, a, 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 an enemy. And I think um, our global governance has never faced such a tragedy. Uh, to tell you the truth, uh, I think we're heading towards a recession. Uh, the market, financial markets are already closed. Even uh, during the past years, we've never really gotten to this kind of a situation where we have to close down financial markets. People are all working remotely. Uh, nobody knows which direction to things are going to take. So it's going to be it's going to be very challenging. But one thing is important is that we have to we have to keep calm. We have to stay positive and hopeful. And I believe that uh, with the right attitude, which is being adopted now around the world and. The, the fact that people are conscious, working remotely from homes, uh, trying to ensure that uh, the economy stands, I think uh, the impact will be negative but sustainable. And Cameroon was expected to host this year the Africa Nations Championship as one of the glaring examples of preparedness for the 2021 expected to be Cameroon hosted African Cup of Nations. But just like in most parts of the world, COVID came to change that dynamics. And ever since the disease was reported with cases in Cameroon, all eyes were turned to the Unity Palace to hear what President Paul Bia will give as policy guideline on how Cameroon will combat this global pandemic that knows no frontiers. The Presidential Response Day came on March 17 with an almost three-hour coronavirus crisis meeting chaired by Prime Minister Joseph Dion Gute. An hour after the meeting, President Paul Bia tweeted this, aware that the health of every individual has no price. Four hours after this Unity Palace social media outing, Prime Minister Joseph Dion Gute came on the airwaves with a 13-point government plan to world coronavirus in this country. As from Wednesday, 
18th March 2020 till further notice. One, Cameroon's land, air, and sea borders will be closed. Consequently, all passenger flights from abroad will be suspended with the exception of cargo flights and vessels transporting consumer products and essential goods and materials whose stopover times will be limited and supervised. Two, the issuance of entry visa to Cameroon at the various airports shall be suspended. Three, all public and private training and educational establishments of various levels of education from nursery school to higher education, including vocational training centers and professional schools, will be closed. Four, Gatherings of more than 50 persons are prohibited throughout the national territory. Five, school and university competitions like the FENASCO Games, which are supposed to be held in the days ahead, are postponed. Cameroon, uh, through um, its uh, Prime Minister and Head of State, have put out uh, one of the best coordinated responses. And I hope that people uh, should not ascribe this to any other thing than a normal uh, natural infection that is spreading. And I think that the coordinated response is one that will take roots and is one that we should practice in all facets of it. I mean, Cameroon has done pretty well in, in trying, on, uh, under very difficult circumstances, you know, have been very open. The Minister of Health has been very open, providing information, you know, from day one. And, and when we think really um, our place is not to get into uh, trying to buy kits or, you know, uh, or provide things in a way which we don't understand what actually the, the needs are. We felt that we are a bank, we deal with money, we trade in money, so we should give money. The country's calendar altered, a continent's calendar altered, and the world's calendar altered. The full fallout of the coronavirus are yet to be completely understood. At first we thought that Africa will be, will be resistant south of the Sahara, but uh, increasingly we are getting uh, figures that are, that, are, that, that are of concern. Cameron's part of the cake. Uh, it's 250,000 US dollars. Uh, we, tra we translated it into 150 million francs uh, CFA. Um, as you know, you're based in 20 African countries, and the, the cake had to be divided amongst 20 countries, and this is how we came down to this calculation. Years on, international solidarity has been the theme song for an ever digitally manned world with artificial intelligence as a force. Corona has enfeebled the cracks on it. We as a bank do have the capacity to weather the storm in this age better than a lot, most of the other banks in the sense that um, we can bank our clients remotely, our clients can get uh, superb services remotely using the digital platform and we are the first bank and perhaps the only one real, real sense, where we actually went to artificial intelligence in, in banking. You are quite aware of Leo, you can open your accounts, you can talk, you can do most banking transactions you can do uh, remotely. You don't need to come into the branches to, to do that. Of course, there's a reluctance to, in, in terms of uptake in new terms and what's been, off, been offered there. Those facilities have been there for many years. But you know, people are used to traditional banking and they love going to the branch and so on. But the, the, the good thing here, I hate to say good, but this is an opportunity for you know, our clients and new clients to come the Real Health Rescue Plan to stabilize the markets and normalize ordinary life of the new imposed way of living lies on the scientific ingenuity of researchers across the globe to develop a vaccine to deal with this monstrous tyranny called coronavirus.
The first is that I think that there needs to be a team of viral hunters uh, who should be on the alert. And uh, with the technologies available, with the reagents available, uh, some of it we may have to manufacture ourselves on the spot. And I think in response to this, um, uh, the university uh, with sponsorship from abroad has set up a production center in biotechnology. We should be able to generate some of these very basic reagents and be able to put it out. Uh, to, to the population so that they can use. I think this preparedness um, is, is essential. We're lucky in the sense that uh, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention in the United States is setting up a number of laboratories uh, across Africa and Cameroon is one of those benefiting. And uh, these laboratories would now be at the forefront of being on the alert to be able to identify and quickly uh, suggest means by which um, it can be contained. And even the first momentous events of this century, the 9-11 attacks of 2001 in the United States of America did not shake and lock down the world with such fear as Corona has done. And the pandemic is yet to complete its course on the vulnerable human beings we are. I think this is something which is very special and we have to be very careful because um, you feel endangered for you. You feel also your family, your, your relatives, your children are also at the same level, at the same time endangered because of this virus. We are in a war situation. This is a war. We need to face it like it is a war. At this particular level, one major conclusion can be drawn as we see, as we wait, as we watch, to see the cause on human beings that COVID-19 is taking. And that major conclusion is this, that the clear war of the 21st century is between politics versus technology and science versus nature. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Charles Abune, as we keep watching the progression of COVID.